All right, so let's look at forms of differential equations here. So by definition, an equation that contains derivatives of one or more unknown functions, so dependent variables and their derivatives, with respect to one or more independent variables. So essentially, if you have an equation and there's some derivatives in it, that's a differential equation. So we have ordinary differential equations and we have partial differential equations. This is going to be what we look at in our class, only ODEs, okay, ordinary differential equations, which means we have a single independent variable. So dy dx, dx dt, we're looking at just one independent variable. Partial differential equations is a whole other class. We're only dealing with single independent variables here. However, you might have in your equation a dy dt and a dx dt because we would have two dependent variables but then only one independent variable of time. And then solving in this class, we're only going to be looking at solving equations um, of first and second order. We might do some third order just so you can see, but we're really looking at first and second. All right, so here are some examples from the textbook. Sorry, the snippets are just a little bit blurry, um, but you can see ordinary differential equations, dy, dx. Um, this notation here means second derivative. Um, again, an ODE can have a dy, dt, and a dx. A, yeah, and a dx dt, and then an x and a y, that's totally fine because you would have only one independent variable for your derivative piece. Okay, partial differential equations deal with partial derivatives. Um, Cal 3 is not a prerequisite for this class, so we're not even going to go into that, but just know you could have um, more differential equations in your future, so you choose after this, okay? All right, so an order of the differential equation is kind of like a degree of a polynomial. So it's the highest derivative of an equation. And notation is really important here. So notice our second order notation is this dy dx, but then with this two in this specific notation. Um, another way to write this might be Take the second derivative of y, okay, where this notation says take the first derivative of y with respect to x and then cube it, okay? So we would call this a second order differential equation. Um, there's also a couple different forms that we can write differential equations in. If you have a first order ODE, ordinary differential equation, we might be able to write it in what's called differential form. You do this by breaking up that dy dx piece, like multiplying through by dx, so that you end up having some function, maybe x's, maybe y's with a dy, some other function, maybe x's, maybe y's with dx, and say equal to zero. You're going to work on writing in between the different forms um, in our module and in our work together, okay? So notice here, we can also write an ordinary differential equation in general form, or we call this in normal form. What ends up happening is if you have a function with so many derivatives, okay, the nth derivative, if you can then solve that for the nth derivative, where this is a function all over here, then we call that a normal form. Okay, so if you end up having a second order like we had before is equal to x plus y plus dy dx, that's an example of a normal form because I have a second order equation and I have a function of x, y, and y prime all over here. Okay. Whereas if I were to look at differential form, I can only do that if it's a first order. So maybe it's something like, ooh, let's throw in some trig. Ooh, that was messy, sorry. Um, sine of x 
times dy dx plus e to the x equals zero. So I could multiply through by dx and get sine x dy plus e to the x dx equals zero. I have a function of x and y with my dy. I have a function of x and y with dx. So this would be differential form. Okay, if you had a second order, you wouldn't be able to write it in differential form. Differential form is only for first order, okay? So if we want to write it in um, for first order differential form, it would look like this right here. Um, if we had that one that we had just a second ago, then I could subtract e to the x over and then divide by sine of x, and that would end up being my equation in normal form. Um, also, let's just say this is e to the y, just so that I have like a different function here. That's fine too, because you can have functions of x and y on that right-hand side. Totally fine to do that, okay? All right, the form that we are actually going to work with the most later on in the class is the linear form. Now, linear form, again, you have up to an nth derivative, and essentially what you only have in the front of those derivative pieces are functions of x. So if I were to go back to that sine of x dy dx plus e to the x equals zero, as my example, I could subtract e to the x to this side over here, and then I would have a first order, so this would be my function of x, this would be a1 of x with my dx. Um, I wouldn't have anything with my y, so like plus zero times y, and then this right here, we would end up calling this g of x piece. Now, if I were to have y instead, okay, I would now not be able to write it in this form because I don't have a function of x on the right-hand side. So I can write it in normal form, I can write it in differential form, but this is not able to be written in linear form because this right-hand side is no longer a function of x. Now, if you're like, well, what about this middle piece, right? Like, what about this guy in here? That has to have a y multiplied. So it can't be a function of y. It needs to be a function of x times your, like, variable y. y can't then be inside another function. It can't be a composite piece, okay? So here are some really important examples. We're gonna be using these a lot, a lot, a lot in this class. Um, we want to get functions into linear form and then be able to solve them. And that's usually the methods that we're going to have here. Okay, so identifying form, being able to be like, okay, can I write it, can I not? Um, it's gonna be important. So in the module, um, if you are doing this in the online class or if we are gonna be doing this in class in person, and we're going to be going over how to go back and forth between these forms. And I want you to actually like write these out um, in, in your notes, okay? Because that's really important. All right, let's look at another example here. So we're going to identify the order and then can it be written in linear form? So um, part A right here is a second order. And then the next thing I look for is, do I have decreasing y primes, like derivatives? Yes, that is true, ending with a y function. And then do I only have functions of x left? And that is true. So this is also linear. All right, looking at b, my highest derivative is this third derivative here. This is not linear because I cannot have that derivative to the fourth power and have it be linear, OK? 
okay? It has to be just the derivative by itself. All right, let's look at C. C is, again, a second order. I then check and see, do I have decreasing derivatives ending with U? You can think about this case, U is like Y and R is like X. Do I have, oh, I just have constants. I just have ones in the front. Those are functions of X, but look over here. This would be like the cosine of X plus Y. Remember, I can't have functions of Y on the right-hand side, so that makes this non-linear. All right, let's look here at D. Again, a second order. Decreasing, yes. All functions of X, yes. So this one is also linear. All right, our last example is going to be writing between the different forms. So this first form I'm noticing is differential form. Okay, and then I'm going to try to write it in the other form. So if I divide everything through by dx, I can write this in normal form by subtracting that y minus x piece over. And then I can divide by 4x to get this in normal form. All right, let's think about, can I write it in um, linear form? Well, if I rewrite this as 4x dy dx plus y minus x equals 0, I could add x to this side here. And then I would have a first order linear because these are all now functions of x because that's gone right there. Okay, so this would be normal. This would be linear. All right, let's try to first write this. Um, it looks like it's not in really any form. Um, I could put this in... Maybe let's try linear first. Mm, no, I can't have y squared, right? And I can't have y with this, so not linear. We can't write it in linear form. Let's see, can I write it in normal form? Let's multiply through by dx. So I would have 6xy with dy. I would have to multiply x squared plus y squared with dx equals zero. Yes, this would be normal form. I'm sorry, no, this would be differential form. Okay, um, let's write it in normal form. So if I have 6xy dy dx negative x squared minus y squared, I could divide. Okay, so I could write this in normal form if I if I wanted to. Okay, this is already in linear form. And if you notice, it's already the one that we did here. Okay, so I'm not going to do this one again. I didn't mean to do that one on purpose. Um, but maybe now that you have it in linear form, try to write it in the other ones and check it for yourself. Okay. All right. Um, since this is a second order here on this last example that we have, um, I can't write it in differential form. But I could write this in normal form by having y double prime equals y prime minus 6y. And now I have that leading um, derivative piece in the very front and then equals and then a function of x, y, and y prime.